Hello YouTube, Reddit Math here, and welcome to the first installment of Let's Roleplay The Banner Saga. Now, The Banner Saga 2 just released on Steam this week, and it got me very interested to play it. However, I've never played the original Banner Saga. Uh, it seems like a game that would really be right up my alley. Uh, there's some gorgeous artwork, some kind of tactical turn-based grid combat with heavy story and RPG elements. Uh, I was always kind of interested to play it, but never got around to it. It's also a game that I think would fit the format for a Let's Roleplay series very well. If you're not familiar with that format, it basically allows me an opportunity to play the game not in maybe the most uh, tactically sound manner, but making decisions that I think would make the most sense for the characters in the game. Uh, there will also be links in the description that will allow you to navigate the video if you're more interested in just seeing those story high points and want to follow along that way. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in to the Banner Saga. Actually, let's take a quick look at options. There we go. Closed captioning is on. And there we are. The story in the Banner Saga changes based on the choices you make. You will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survive through a tenuous alliance driving black destroyers called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. Only one thing has stopped. The sun. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the wild human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Ridgehorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. Oh my. <laughs> well, that was quite an introduction to the world. What he said. Uh, so we would appear to be controlling the Varl, right? Along this Varl human border. Um, we're, we're giant sized men. We've arrived just in time. The chieftain in red and his men are looking at a tougher fight than they bargained for. You drag around the screen to see your surroundings. Click the check mark to continue. All right, and as we see, this battle has waged for a while. Okay. 
Interesting. These portraits show the order of initiative, taking turns from left to right. Your allies are blue, the enemy is red. It's your turn to act. No, I'm red. The, okay, anyway. Um, shield banger. Movement happens before action. This ring shows your shield banger is active. The blue tiles around him show where he can move. Some characters fill more tiles than others. The horned allies are a race of giants called Varl, who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile. This can have a huge impact on your strategy. Click the tile you want to move to, then click the check mark to confirm. Move your shield banger here to get him into attack range. Okay. Oh, nice. I like those uh, movement animations. To target an enemy, click the tile on which they stand. Ally tiles are blue, the enemies are red. Target this enemy now by clicking his tile. You can choose to either attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. The numbers beneath each icon, 2 and 5, show the damage that you will do to that stat. Okay. Strength counts as both health and damage. A loss of 2 strength means you'll now do 2 less damage. If strength falls to 0, the character falls in battle. Alright, so I could... Uh, Armor blocks strength damage, but can be reduced by a break. By breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. I see, I see. This enemy only has five strength remaining. A strength attack will kill him. Click the fist now to attack his strength, then confirm your choice. Yeah, he didn't like that much. <laughs> He's down. Each time you make a kill, your renown grows, which is used later to improve characters. After taking an action, your turn ends. Next up is the enemy. Turns always alternate, even if you are outnumbered. Despite being at full strength, the chieftain will do little damage against your shield banger's high armor. <coughs> now it's your warhawk's turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all characters can use willpower to boost their actions. Willpower is a limited resource, so use it wisely. By kicking on gold tiles, a character can move further than usual at the cost of one willpower per gold tile. Red pulsing tiles beneath your enemy show how close you'll have to be to get. You'll have to get to be in range. Move your Warhawk into attack range now. All right. I got slightly distracted by the uh, improper use of further, but we'll not quibble about that right now. Okay, so if I go there, is that why I only have two instead of three? Eight of eight. It seems to be the same symbol. Maybe it requires two willpower to get there. Let's see what his willpower stat does. Yes, indeed, it did take two. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but your Warhawk has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Click the Warhawk's tile to access his ability. Clicking your character tile will bring up all of his combat options including move, ability, attack, and in turn. Click the purple ability icon. Tempest. Attack, in turn. Okay. So if I Tempest, the ability description appears on the tooltip below. The Warhawk's Tempest allows him to slam multiple enemies at once. Select an enemy and then confirm your choice. Tempest 1, normal strength damage to two adjacent enemies, starting from target and glowing and glowing and going clockwise. Okay. Uh... Very fancy. That made quick work of the Chieftain's bodyguards. When there is only one enemy left, players enter pillage mode. During pillage, each character moves in order and there are no more guaranteed turns. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Your allies now get to move twice in a row. If a character does not move on his turn, he can rest or gain one willpower. The Chieftain will rest this turn. Looks like the Chieftain is in some trouble. Your Shield Banger won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost your damage. Click the Chieftain's tile to attack. Click the Fist, and then the stars above the Fist. That's what those things were last time. To add extra willpower. The number of stars available each turn are determined by your Exertion stat. There we go. You'll see the damage number go up as you add willpower. Click a star and then the green check mark to kill this enemy.
All right. The foes lying dead in my path would indeed regret it. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the dreads arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more dreads to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I am in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with double our king's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. Wow, quite the massacre outside the doors as well. Chapter 1, Only the Sun Has Stopped. Now, I know they said earlier that the superstitious men were worried that the sun had stopped. But I'm not particularly superstitious, and that would certainly worry me as well. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Uh, right? Do I need to... Oh, okay. Just click to dismiss. I see, I see. Eric, steward of Strand. I manage the governor's business. Ubin, isn't it? It is. I'm just here for the tithe. What do you want? Uh, let's be cordial enough. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. Seems a bit chaotic around here. What did you have in mind? Or didn't exactly agree? Let's find out a little bit more. Scaffolds that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I knew I know who can tell us. Okay. So we meet Eric, the governor's man, and head to the docks. Okay, cool. So this is uh, like an interactable map. But right now we just have the market tents. Clansman fighter. Okay, and these are our... Like, the size of our army. It looks like we've got 32 Varl. I'm assuming that's what the, uh, the 0, 0, and 32 are. We have great morale, you know. Okay, now days of supplies, 100, day 0. All right, well, let's go ahead and head to the merchant. Let me handle this, Eric says. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as you approach. Had I'm not in the mood today. For for what? Talking to an idiot. The scaffolding's chieftain bled out about an hour ago had. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. Alright. <laughs> we could offer to help. I don't have the patience for this or say nothing. I don't have the patience for this. And I'm like a 12 foot tall man with horns. So I feel like intimidation should be right in my wheelhouse. Had sweats visibly fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Wait, just buy one of these. If everybody thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, yeah? I'm going to go ahead with the Intimidate him. You motion to Gunulf, your enormous bodyguard, who looms over the man like a snake over a mouse. Gods, Eric, laying it on a bit heavy, don't you think? Where are the scaffolds? Nobleman, up by East Wall, but that was months ago, last I know. Had skulks away with a wave of Eric's hand, gathering things from his hovel. 
disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Are we done here? Gunnulf, were you wearing green back at the Great Hall? No, just bought him while we were walking around. Why? <laughs> you look like a frog. No reason. They look good on you. I think the, the green really brings out the red in your beard. I'm glad you care. Gunnulf goes off to look at more stalls. Eric, that man of yours seemed unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Had, but he used to be a scaffling. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone on to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman is a mead hall. Best I can tell. The name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these scowls in the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. Where is this place again? Nobleman is halfway up the hill towards the Great Hall. You won't miss it. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tithe. I'll remind him. Alright, so we're meeting at the Nobleman. The Mead House. Oh. <laughs> Apparently there are uh, neon signs in uh, this kind of ancient world here. That's, that's good to know. Uh, it doesn't look like we could do anything else back at the market. So for right now, it's only to the nobleman. You arrive in what? You arrive in front of what appears to be nobleman. A few minutes later, Eric appears with a weather-beaten man. Introduces Volgard. I'll point them out. Eric says over his shoulder. Ready? Um, yeah, let's get this over with. That's the spirit, says Volgard. Okay, here we go. Volgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of a table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken scaffolds scramble to find their own weapons, turning tables and mead steins in the process. Well, we're, uh, we're not ones for subtlety. I think Eric's just following my lead from earlier. Interesting how I've, uh, just stayed back. Eric, I'm assuming this is Eric over here, Volgard there, and then our two men up front. Click a unit to deploy them into any of the blue tiles. When all units are satisfactorily deployed, click the ready button to start. Okay, so I can just, uh, shift people around for right now, right? Okay, I see, I see. Let's maybe keep our uh, human friends back just a little bit. We'll do something like this. Yeah, I think that'll work for me. Uh, when all units are ready, we'll click the ready button. Okay, with them, it's going to be a butchery. Hmm. Uh, I'll tell you what, we'll move just right here. Stone wall blocks three damage per hit for one round. Why not? Um, okay, they're they're staying away from us as well. Go up to right here. Rally would give two willpower to an ally at any range. Um, I don't really think I need that. Well, let's just in turn instead. I didn't expect our uh, two human allies to be going first, which is a little disappointing, but uh, we should be able to get the action started now. Alright, we can pretty easily deal half of that guy's damage to him. Um, damn. I don't think I really like want to just run into middle of all these guys, but then again, since we uh, we just alternate turns, the numerical advantage isn't really as important. Well. And... Well, I can't attack adjacent like that, it would appear. Alright, well, I'll just in turn then. I'm sure there are going to be some missteps early on. And in fact, me, okay, yeah, I've got to be 
Uh, like, I can only attack in cardinal directions, it would seem. Um, me being at a numerical disadvantage, like, almost seems... Uh, like it makes me that much deadlier. Hmm. If only because, uh, you know, they've got to move up all these guys back behind them. And I'm just going to be attacking repeatedly. Deflected, nice. Um, is there no way? It's okay. So there's a way for me to cancel them. Um, I can only move one more space by using willpower. Not really worth it. Not as I see it anyway. Okay. They're all interested in getting over there, but uh, I think they're going to regret that, as I will be able to Tempest at them. Does this hit allies? Uh, let's hope not. And there we go. Plus one renowned, not bad. Stone wall again. <laughs> well, that was an awful lot of attacks for uh, very little use. Tell you what, um, let's come up to here and just hit you. Okay, not too bad. Um, Move the shield banger in and. Oh, man. We only do one damage. I'll tell you what, let's, uh, let's try this out. We'll go ahead and break an armor. Which is not something we've tried before. Yeah, and they're attacking our armor there as well. And now, can I just repeatedly tempest at these guys? That kind of seems like a fairly solid strategy. I got promoted for it as well. And that guy's uh, armor is basically making him very, very tanky. Uh, let's see, he's at six, he's at eight. Let's try this. Now, since strength controls your... Uh, health as well as your attack. If I'm just wounding guys, like, am I leaving them basically unable to do anything to me? Uh, nope. Nope. You come. Okay. Gotta move in there first. And then I, I dislike how it uh, pops up with that every time. I'd rather just be able to attack right away. See if I just like take these guys down to like two health. Either I'm like completely misunderstanding how that mechanic works, or uh, that will leave them mostly inept. Rest. Let's go with an attack. Six, six, down to six. So he's at two, so I'm just going to leave him be. We'll hit that guy instead. I am a little worried because they're uh, they're kind of focusing on his armor here, which uh, you know seems like the kind of thing that might creep up on you, like as you end up not terribly injured, but then suddenly with uh, with no armor to defend against anything, and just take like a wallop of damage. All right, so you're at two, you're at three. Anybody have like a lot of HP? The six over here, I should probably be a little worried about. Really? Okay, up to three, there we go. There's a little willpower 
Get him down to one. Okay. And then... We want to attack. We want to attack you. We'll go for five. Ow. Didn't like that much, did you? No, they're certainly chipping away at it. It can't be that, then. Because uh, he just did one damage to me, and I've got seven armor. So I feel like... Um, I don't actually know where that one damage comes from. Because it seems like even at max strength, uh, he would only have s the ability to do six. So I honestly don't know. Uh, maybe I will figure that out as time goes on. Because we're all down to just one or two. It should be pretty easy to start knocking them down. Hmm. Okay, and another kill. Yeah, I think each one of these guys is going to fall. They're just doing uh, armor damage repeatedly to the shield banger here. That did one as well. Okay, uh, this should be their sealed fate, as there is now only the one opponent. And we're into pillage mode. We're just going to be repeatedly attacking them. Uh, so, have him move up and easily take the killing blow. Yeah, and there we have it. And we got one promotion, tempered by blood. And quite a bit of renown. Alright, I can dig it. There they are, gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. Eric is looking out the hall's window onto the bay. A fleet of longships approach with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well, Wagner. Or, know well, Wagner. Next for Varl Kinship, last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guess. See what I deal with all day long? Ah, makes things a little... Ah, things make a little more sense. You hope I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrive. Not me, the governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies or pools of entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Can I ask one more favor? What is it? If you happen to stall our guests down at the docks, I wouldn't object. Well, maybe I will. Eric and Valgard hustle from the mead house. To his credit... Eric tosses the barkeep a spar of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. Hmm. Oh, wow. They weren't kidding about the fleet of longships, were they? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, that, I think, is going to do it as our introduction to the Banner Saga. I'm certainly interested to... Uh, kind of get our call to action and find out what the uh, overall quests will be during this saga. Uh, but we'll have to find that out in a future episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, feel free to subscribe. There's more content on the channel every day. Leave a like or a comment if you have anything to say about this or any of my other videos. And I will catch you guys next time.